sisters, Yale, uh, and even USC, a Methodist college, and how in time they seem to regress and uh, they become so liberal that they begin to deny uh, the um, word of God. They begin to deny the scriptures. They begin to deny the atoning death of Jesus. And, and they, they it, it's interesting, they always seem to regress rather than go forward and, uh, or even to continue in, in uh, a level field and, and just to continue uh, and holding on. And this, this to me is a real problem. Uh, there is always, it seems, that pressure to, uh, when you are training men for the ministry and all, there is that pressure to seek to get accreditation. And uh, with accreditation, uh, so that the degrees that they get are recognized by uh, these various uh, associations. And you want the accreditation to be recognized and uh, so that those that have studied will have their degrees that will be recognized by the academia. And uh, we have thus far resisted uh, an endeavor by some to accredit our uh, college uh, because looking at history with the accreditation and all and with that emphasis placed upon the accreditation there becomes that uh, academic kind of snobbery but with it a sort of turning towards liberal ideas and concepts so that many of the colleges that were established, Princeton and all, solid. And uh, you look at the, the faculties of the past, some of the greatest Christian scholars, and yet how they gradually deteriorate from a solid Christian base and they usually become extremely liberal. And, and I think that it is a tragic thing and I don't know how to guard against it. And so uh, thus far we've just said, no, we're not gonna accredit. If you want to go and learn the Bible, you can learn the Bible. You can get a good understanding of the Bible, uh, but uh, uh, you, well, there are colleges that will accept uh, our courses that we do teach, but yet uh, we are not trying to seek to uh, get the recognition of the world uh, for the education that we, uh, because we don't want to move in the direction that we see so many of the colleges moving. And uh, it, it's sad uh, that they all seem to move in that direction away from uh, the fundamental teachings of the word. So the rejoicing over this apostate system being judged. The 24 elders and the four cherubim or the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, amen, hallelujah. The word amen means so be it and praise the Lord. So the rejoicing over the judgment on the apostate system. There was a voice that came out from the throne that said, praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Heaven is gonna be an interesting and wonderful place. It's gonna be a place of praising God. And of course, I think that that is going to be very spontaneous. And I think that true praise is spontaneous. 
Now here they are calling on them to praise God, but I think that our praises will be very spontaneous. Uh, I think that um, the truest form of praise is that which rises spontaneously from my heart when I observe the goodness of God. There are times in my life I think, Lord, I am such a miserable mess. I just blew that situation and I'm so sorry that I failed to truly represent you in that and, and I sort of feel, Lord, I don't deserve you know anything but just a spanking. And the Lord just blesses me, sends a tremendous blessing and I realize how unworthy and undeserving I am of it and what it does is that it just sparks praise. I say, oh Lord, you're too much, can't handle you. I mean, that's so great that you would bless me, Lord, like that, realizing how unworthy and how undeserving I am of those blessings. That's the truest form of praise, spontaneous, just rising from my heart. And so hear the call, praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. So inasmuch as we're gonna be commanded to do that when we get to heaven, and one of the words of praise is hallelujah, praise to God, why don't we just pause for a minute and praise him singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. of that when we get to heaven. <laughs> so I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings saying, hallelujah, it's going to be a thunderous, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, glorious. In Revelation 14, 2, John said, I heard the voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harpers harping with their harps. And so here it is again, uh, the voice of a great multitude like the sound of many waters or a waterfall uh, and the voice of mighty thunderings, and they're saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. What a day that's going to be. Let us be glad and rejoice. So now we are moving to what is called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, 
has made herself ready. 